How the blazes did you get off that island? When you marooned me on that godforsaken spit of land, you forgot one very important thing, mate. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> In Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow is given a pistol with one bullet and marooned on a desert island. He of course lives to tell the tale, but is there any truth to the idea that stuff like this actually happened? It's hard to think of a historical period more fictionalized and warped in public imagination than the golden age of piracy. For starters, there are zero contemporary accounts of people walking the plank or using parrots as pets. But it turns out that the trope of marooned Golden Age pirates has a strong historical footing. Naval historian David Cordingly writes, Of the many wicked deeds attributed to pirates, there is one which has a secure foundation, and that is the marooning of victims on desert islands. Sometimes pirates stole ships and marooned helpless crews of merchants, but they also frequently deserted unruly members of their own crew. In fact, captains enshrined marooning into their pirate codes, which were sets of laws aboard pirate vessels. Of the few surviving pirate codes from the golden age of piracy, two list marooning as an official punishment. If you were on board Captain John Phillips' vessel and tried to abandon, steal from, or deceive the crew, they would have left you on an uninhabited island in the middle of nowhere. You'd be given a pistol loaded with one bullet, should you wish to end your suffering early, and a bottle of water. The most successful pirate of the Golden Age, Bartholomew Roberts, had a similar policy of marooning crew members who stole from or deserted the crew. There are a number of notable individual accounts of marooning, too. In 1717, Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, raided Charleston, South Carolina. He didn't feel like sharing all the plunder, so he dropped 25 of his crew on a desert island and sailed off. There's another interesting case in 1704 involving English privateers, pirates paid by a government to raid only enemy ships. The privateers stopped on one of the uninhabited Juan Fernandez Islands, hundreds of miles off the Chilean coast. Crew member Alexander Selkirk had never gotten along with Captain Thomas Stradling and told Stradling that his ship wasn't fit to sail. Selkirk said he wouldn't get back on the ship, but then changed his mind and asked to come aboard. Stradling said no, and sailed off without him. In the golden age of piracy, being marooned was essentially a slow, cruel death sentence. Most victims were thrown on a remote island and never heard from again. Most victims. Four and a half years after Alexander Selkirk was marooned, a privateer by the name of Woods Rogers noticed a fire burning on one of the Juan Fernandez Islands. Selkirk was still alive. He stood draped in goatskins, looking wilder than the first owners of them, and gave his visitors a proper tour. He showed them how he had learned to hunt the island's wild goats with his bare hands and how he used their skins to make clothes and the walls for his two huts. Some of his survival methods were genius. When rats snuck into his hut as he slept, Selkirk used food to domesticate feral cats, which from then on kept rodents away. He also cooked goat meat on a fire he made with two sticks and seasoned the meat with peppers from the island's pimento trees. Oh, and his instinct about not boarding Stradling's ship proved correct. The ship wound up sinking off the coast of Colombia. The Spanish imprisoned Stradling and all of the other survivors. When Alexander Selkirk returned to England after the whole ordeal, Rogers published his story and Selkirk became a minor celebrity. His survival account inspired Daniel Defoe's 1719 novel Robinson Crusoe, in which a castaway survives on a remote island for 28 years. There are a few other recorded instances of people surviving being marooned, but Selkirk's story in particular seems emblematic of the golden age of piracy. Popular imagination of the period is shaped by fun but romanticized fiction. In fact, the island straddling marooned Selkirk on is officially named Robinson Crusoe Island. But underneath the myths and legends of the era, there's an exciting real world, 
in which pirates really did things like fly the Jolly Roger and maroon people on desert islands. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of History Dose. If you did, please consider subscribing to our channel where you can check out our other content or even donating to our Patreon account. Anything from, you know, 25 cents, $2 to $15 if you want to. Uh, There you can get special advantages like a monthly newsletter or even an email from us at History Dose asking for personal input on any future video ideas. 